Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so proud that you are part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Thank you so very, very much for letting the world know all about the show. We want to let you know about today's guest. She is the author of The Peculiar Pig. Today, we'll be speaking with Joy Steuerwald. And at the end of the show, we will have a special announcement. We have a brand new Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Before Joy joins us, it is my pleasure to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by the Queen Vernita Visitor Series by author Dr. Don Menge. This is a fun and educational series of nine books that your family will absolutely love. You're all going to love following the Queen and her 12 subjects as they explore a new and exotic region every new year. The Queen's subjects teach her all about stalactites, sharks, seahorses, glaciers, volcanoes, and so much more. As a special education teacher, Dr. Dawn's books touches on disabilities such as Down syndrome, Rett syndrome, cerebral palsy, deafness, visual impairment, and autism. Pam Schneider has provided bright, colorful, and whimsical illustrations that complement the text. The Queen Vernita Visitor Series will make a great addition to a classroom or your child's bookshelf. Learn more about it by visiting Amazon.com and searching for Dr. Don Menge, the Queen Vernita Visitor Series. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by the Storied app. Do you want to be a storytelling superhero? You know, be the parent or caregiver who is always ready to tell the perfect story at any time? If you answered yes, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't, we have got an app for you. It's the Storied app. That's right, the Storied app. This is a fantastic tool that will give you instant access to lots of original stories created by top children's storytellers from all over the globe. Looking to help your child become more mindful? The Storied app has lots of stories about mindfulness. Maybe you'd like to read a story that will inspire your children to be kinder. Well, we got you covered there, too. You can check out Zuli and Friends. The Storied app features content from all over the world that will help kids develop a respect for other cultures and perspectives. And the stories have all been developed with the input of top children's development experts. And there is new content added all the time. All of the story app's stories were created to be read in about five minutes. The perfect time for a bedtime story. The app is so easy to navigate. And I love the app's special bookshelf feature that allows you to save your children's favorite stories. This is a super resource that every family will love. Check it out today. For more information, go to their website, trystoried.com. And this episode is also brought to you by There Are No Fireflies in Montana, the brand new children's picture book written by Nita Clark and illustrated by her daughter, Kathy Doherty. A young girl is curious as to why there are no fireflies in Montana. She wants to know why. So starting with her mom, she winds through every member of her family, asking each one why there are no fireflies where they live. It, the story ends with her little brother who has a very interesting explanation as to why there are no fireflies in Montana. Can you just imagine the fun you and your kids are going to have coming up with your own theories as to why there are no fireflies in Montana? Nina Clark and Kathy Darty are two of our favorite guests. You, you want to go to their website, a aneatreadpublishing.biz, to find out about... Uh, why There Are No Fireflies in Montana, and all of their great books, including Why Do Dandelions Grow, I Hate Numbers, and The Royal Search for Shenanigans. Check it out today. It's available on Amazon and at aneatreadpublishing.biz. Joining us right now from right outside of San Francisco in California, she's here to celebrate her brand new debut picture book, Please welcome to the show the author and illustrator of The Peculiar Pig, Joy Stoyerwald. Joy, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm just very excited. I'm excited to have you here, and I'm excited to find out what The Peculiar Pig is all about. 
Well, the peculiar pig is um, pretty much about uh, just about being different and being okay with being different. Um, this because this book is about siblings and about um, a little dachshund puppy that gets raised by um, a pig, a mama pig, and she has her little piglet brother and sisters. And they thought she was pretty peculiar because she was different than they were. But then by the end of the story, you find out that they actually are really grateful for her differences and her peculiarities. And there's just a really great ending. Hopefully everybody thinks it's great. <laughs> but um, just to see how, you know, Penny, which is the dachshund's name, how she helps her brothers and sisters. But it's it's a fun little story. I mean, I enjoyed writing it and working with my editor on it and, and illustrating it. Definitely. What was it that inspired you to write a book about a peculiar pig and to help kids understand that it's okay to be different? Right. Um, well, the funny thing is, is I was going over a list of ideas with my agent and she Actually, all I had was this image of a mama pig in a pig pen, and she had all these little, there were all these little piglets lined up, but one of the little piglets just looked different than the others, and I had just one line for the, for the idea that said there was a different sort of piglet in mama's pig pen that morning or something. <laughs> so it just started with that image, and then from there, um, I worked with my agent and I came up with a story, you know, just really celebrating uniqueness and being different and that it's okay. So that's the funny thing was it just started with that image. It is amazing sometimes where our inspiration comes from. And I think a lot of times some of those, some of those inspirations that just kind of seem like an accident of the universe. I think that there's a little bit more going on there, whether, you know, whether you're a person of faith, you believe you're being inspired from above, or if it's just something in our subconscious that we're not quite aware of, but it's, you know, something that we want to, to kind of get out there. And, and uh, what, what a neat way that that story was came to life. Right. And I actually have a, a little red short haired miniature dachshund. She's my muse really. <laughs> so that's where the dachshund part of it came in. So that's the the reason I chose that that type of dog. And I always think of her when I look at her laying in the sun, laying down. She looks like a little piglet. So it's kind of funny <laughs> where they are very similar and yet different creatures, right? You know, yeah, I have to. This is this is sort of kind of going off road here, and I apologize for going off on a tangent. But I got to tell you, I'm I'm we we've had dogs in our family. All of our lives, and since the little kid, but but like dogs, like Saint Bernards and mm -hmm. German Shepherds, and you know, so I had always, you know, when I see dachshunds, when I was a kid, and I saw dachshunds, I'm like, oh, that's not a dog. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and, and and we were down in Puerto Rico visiting our family, and my wife's cousin had this little dachshund, and I, you know, I'm like looking at it, and I goes, what's that little piece of dust that's running around the floor here? But I, it's it's a dog. It's small. And, and it was like eye opening for me that this little thing that doesn't look like my giant St. Bernard's is a dog. And it's still, right. you know, like the St. Bernard in a lot of different ways. Right. Well, yeah, she's definitely a dog. And dachshunds are known to be pretty obstinate and just very <laughs> self-willed. <laughs> you know, they they want to go in there and, you know, because they were originally bred for um you know, going in tunnels and, and getting badgers, the larger breed that she's a miniature. So she does more of like ratting and things like that. So she definitely has that nose and that like determination mm -hmm. you know, to get things. Mm -hmm. And, but she's a really good dog and she's going to be 15 next month. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's she's amazing. She's still a young pup though. She, she's still doing great. Well, that is one of the things I noticed about because we we have since brought a small little dust thing into <laughs> our home. We have a, a broken beagle who's tiny. Well, he's overweight, but he's you know, he's small. But boy, he has an attitude like he's a giant. You know, like he, <laughs> the, the same Bernard's you can get them to do anything, but this dog's like I ain't doing that. <laughs> 
Right, right. Yeah, they're definitely, uh, they've got their personalities. Yeah. So. <laughs> Now, some of the uh, we have a lot of authors listening to the show, a lot of independent authors, and a lot of aspiring authors. And you're here talking about you and you, you know, had this idea, and you and your agent kind of worked on it. And and I'm imagining some of them might be out there going, "How does she have that agent? She doesn't. This is her first book, and how does that happen?" You've actually been an illustrator for some time. You've illustrated a number of books. Yes, yes. Um, I went through many careers, all der- having to do with um, creative jobs, but um, like anything from children's educational CD-ROMs to designing for a gift to company and just um, – so I've always done and, – and I've always tried to do illustrating for children, and then I left the, the design job um, and decided to just go for it and try and illustrate for children full-time. So luckily my, my husband helped me out with that. <laughs> so to be able to work from home and just really work on your portfolio. Um, cause originally I, yeah, as you said, I, I've been an illustrator and I didn't really consider writing until I, um, met my agent and, and I've been working with her. So, and then I realized, you know, I really do enjoy writing. And so I've got, you know, I've got a list and a few ideas that I'm working on now. And hopefully going to have submitted and, you know, sell some more books or, you know, some more manuscripts. But um, it was a long road. So mm-hmm. definitely it's not easy. You just really have to work at your craft. And, you know, especially the illustrating, you know, I've been working on obviously for for years and decades. But then um, the writing, you know, it, it doesn't come easy. <laughs> but it's definitely I enjoy it. So. So was it, were you in, did you have this inspiration in the back of your mind that, gee, maybe I'd like to write someday? Or was it the agents just saying, look, you, you're a great illustrator. How about we, um, you know, um, keep, keep all of the, uh, all of the royalties ourselves and you just do the the writing and the illustrating. (laughs) You, You know, it's a little bit of both. I did, I had it in the back of my mind that I had some ideas, but, um, it was my agent that, kind of encouraged me and and pushed me more to to just being okay with being an author and to to really work at that as well because yeah I mean it's it's a great feeling to be able to illustrate your own book Mm -hmm. and I've been really grateful you know for Nancy Paulson books and just working with them was amazing I mean Nancy is an is a fabulous editor I mean she really knew her stuff and helped me along too. They never told me what to write or told me what to do, but, you know, she just kind of helped direct and, you know, get me thinking about things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but it was, it was definitely my agent that kind of gave me that extra boost (laughs) to start thinking about writing as well. Now I I was talking to an author illustrator um, the other day for one of our episodes and she was saying that she approaches she was creating the illustrations as she was writing it. So both mm-hmm. were kind of happening at the same time. It, right. It, did you write first and, or, or create the illustrations and then write to fit the illustrations? Or were you like her just kind of doing things simultaneously? Well, the originally or the original version, I definitely thought more in pictures. Mm-hmm. I could imagine things happening before I actually put down the words and arrange the words the way that, you know, made sense or, or like was, went smoothly. And, you know, and it took a lot of um, revisions and a lot of just back and forth with first with my agent, we got it to a, a point where, you know, we felt like it was submittable to, to publishers. And so there was a lot there with her and, you know, me kind of figuring out the outline and what I wanted to happen in the story and, you know, just your beginning, middle and end and trying to figure out what I wanted to express or not necessarily that I wanted to have a message, but, it, but that I wanted it to be, you know, something that was worthwhile, you know, to actually create. So I did, I guess I did want to have some sort of theme or message to it. But at the beginning, it was, 
you know, like I said, that just having that image in my head of the mother piglet or the mother pig with her piglets and one different little piglet in there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Now, do you, so you, you mentioned, you know, thinking, uh, when when you created the project, thinking mm-hmm. as an artist or thinking of the pictures, do you find now that you're an author, illustrator, that you you have two ways of thinking or two parts of your brain that, that you know, that one handles the writing and one handles the illustrations? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess so, because, I mean, I do still think visually when I'm thinking of an idea. Um and a lot of times it, it, there's just an image in my head and then I kind of go off of that image to figure out what the story is going to be about. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess for the writing part of it, yeah, there's a, there's definitely a different part of the brain that <laughs> works through that. One of the things I, one of the things I love about this show, being the host of this show is that I get to ask questions that, uh, of, of authors, illustrators, of things that, that, that I'm curious about, but I also get to ask questions uh, for people in my life that that, 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 that may help them. I have a, a wonderful niece, Tiffany, who has illustrated a couple of my books, and oh. she just graduated from, from college with a degree in design and graphic arts and, and has illustrated a, a couple of other books. Uh, but what advice do you have for Tiffany and other aspiring illustrators as, as they grow and mature as artists? Wow. Okay. Well, definitely – I mean, there's different advice for authors than for illustrators because for, for me anyway, I feel like um, for illustrators, you have to constantly be drawing and and also listen to advice and criticism, you know, learn from it. Don't don't be upset by it necessarily. Mm-hmm. Don't like feel like you're in love with the particular drawing that you've made, you know, be willing to adjust things, especially in this industry. You, you might think what you've done is like how it should be, but then when you have other influences, then you learn to just, Oh, wait a minute. This, there is a better way of doing it. So just be open to that. And I, I guess the same with being an author. Cause I know, um, a lot of times you'll start with a story as in a certain way and you have a certain, you know, thing that the way you've written it. But then once you have the influence of an editor or, you know, just people looking at it and just always be willing to listen to the advice and, you know, not compromise yourself necessarily, but but definitely be open to listen to people that have more experience, I suppose, than you do or. Um, but always just, you know, work at your craft and really find your passion for it too. I think just, you know, don't, don't give up. It's going to be tough. Sometimes it'll, it'll be, you'll feel like you just want to go into a different field, <laughs> but you know, if you really have a passion for it, then just keep working at it. You, That's it. <laughs> I, I, th- I think the advice that you're sharing about being open to suggestions and in criticism and advice is really important. Uh, my wife will, will, if she were here, she would tell you that that's something that I have a real hard time with, <laughs> you know, in terms of whether I'm writing or creating some marketing material or even, uh, you know, creating my um, educational magic shows. And so I think it's something that a lot of people have trouble with. And um, but it is, it is really important. How, how did you get to the point where you were able to kind of say, okay, let, let me listen to this without first exploding? Right. Well, I had a lot and in, in my college years, actually, I had a lot of, um, I had some great teachers, some, um, great instructors that pretty much taught us that early on that you just need to, you know, not be in love with something that you do so much that you won't listen to reason, I guess, just that, you know, that there, there can be a a better way because I know for me too, I mean, for anyone that you just feel like this is, this is your creation, right? This is your baby, (laughs) you know, it's part of you. So there is that resistance to wanting to change it when you feel like you worked through it and you got it to this point, but then, yeah, just, um, 
I don't know, just over the years, I, I've realized that, you know, it's okay to, to make the changes and to look for better ways, different ways, you know, not, than, than what you originally think. So you don't have to hold on so tightly. <laughs> you just kind of, you know, listen to the advice and, and decide whether it's what you, you know, agree with or not, yeah. I guess, but. Now, in, yeah. in, in your career uh, illustrating other books, and uh, has there been anything that you've created that really surprised you when, you know, you, you had a project and you started it and you thought it was going to go in one direction and then you just started working on it and then all of a sudden when it, when it was complete, you kind of step back and look at it and go, where did that come from? Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. happy with it, but where did it come from? Well, and especially with my um, with the the Canadian province books, uh-huh. I worked really closely with the the publisher, and she was also the author. But um, just working with her, she had I like in her mind, she knew what she wanted, and I might think of something a different way, but then she would describe what she was thinking of and what she wanted and oh okay yeah that does work better you know so I you know just working back and forth with someone like that where they you know they they push you a a different direction it's it's healthy it's good but you know I definitely thought of things differently you know before her input and then oh you know most of the time it was it was spot on what Uh she wanted (laughs) so now, w- w- the um, what Joy's referring to, we were speaking before we started the interview. She she illustrated a series of books that dis- take take readers on a journey through the many beautiful provinces of Canada. D- what's the name of that series? It's um, Baby Lullaby is the the series, and there's just we've done most of the the provinces, but so like Alberta Lullaby, so everything ends with a lullaby. Nova Scotia, <laughs> so but they're all really amazing it was an amazing experience working on those books and just the research and everything and getting i really wish i would have had a chance to actually physically go to these places because they were just so amazing they they are i've I've been to most of the places on the eastern half of canada as we were talking about before the show Mm -hmm. what advice we we talked about what advice you have for illustrators what advice do you have for authors that are out there especially um indie authors who are going out and they're working with they don't have an agent necessarily helping them out they don't have a publisher but they're working with an illustrator what kind of advice can you give to the authors in terms of uh, helping them express what they hope the illustrator will be able to create for them that's a good question i guess um Definitely trust your illustrator, I would have to say, because, I mean, you, you give them notes, you you explain what you're looking for, but a lot of times an illustrator will enhance that. I mean, that's pretty much what they're for. It's like you have these beautiful words, these amazing words, but then you want to make sure that the illustrations aren't just describing the words or showing what the words are saying. You want to be able to work with an illustrator and have them expand on what you're saying, you know, and really enrich the words. So definitely just, you know, find an illustrator that whose work you really like, and then, you know, be able to feel like you can trust them. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, it really is a collaboration between illustrator and Mm -hmm. and author. And the, the illustrators do, have a, a huge job in telling the story. You're not just taking pictures of something that's in somebody's mind. You're actually taking the words and creating your own part of the story. Mm-hmm. And and depending on the avenue that you take for publishing, it's like sometimes you know with a, a publisher they they choose the illustrator, mm-hmm. and you I, I've heard that you either sometimes you have a little bit of um, contact with them, and sometimes it's like you pretty much are handing over the reins mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the illustrator takes over and embellishes or not embellishes, but, you know, really creates something to go with your, your story, your manuscript. So mm-hmm. and it just really depends because if you do have, you know, if you do get to work closely with an illustrator, that's, you know, that's different than if you 
you know, or handing it to a publishing house. So. Right, right. Yeah. Different experience. Yeah. I, I think a lot of, a lot of first time, uh, pu- authors are surprised by that, that then when they, when mm-hmm. they, when they sell their manuscript, they are selling their manuscript to right, someone. Right. And, mm-hmm. and whoever buys it can do with it what they, what they choose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you do get to, to, put in art notes and things like that and what you, you know, especially if it's, well, I mean, obviously like a, a wordless picture book, mm-hmm. though, that's mm-hmm. amazing. I, I mean, that must be really difficult to work for, you know, work with when there's a separate author from an illustrator, because the author I would imagine would have to just describe everything because, you know, if <laughs> they, they have the idea and they know what they want to happen throughout the story, but then they have to really, you know, describe the nuances of it and and then trust that the illustrator is going to, you know, be able to execute that. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just, I guess it just really depends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want everybody to be able to check out your website and see some of the amazing illustrations you've created. So where can they go to connect with you online? I am, um, my website is joystewie.com. It's J-O-Y-S-T-E. W-Y at or dot com. <laughs> and then also, um, my, uh, my pub, or I'm sorry, my agent's, um, website, I have work posted on there as well. That's actually probably more recent work, <laughs> but that's at, um, Bookmark Literary. That's my, my agency. So, um, and I'm also on Twitter or not on that Twitter as much as I am on Instagram. And that's also Joy Stewie is my Instagram. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we yeah. want, want everybody to check out what, well, I'm going to have to go online and start following Joy Stewie on Instagram and have to definitely check out the websites and absolutely check out the peculiar pig. We've been talking to the author, Joy Stewie, Stewie Joy, thank mm-hmm. you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be the author of The Science of Santa Claus, M.G. Knight, coming to us from London and the United Kingdom. All right, earlier I told you that we have an announcement, a brand new Reading With Your Kids certified great read. We're real excited to let you know that Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck, written by Allison Paul Clackwitz, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Moms know everything. They know how to bake and play sports and pump bicycle tires and tuck their kids into bed just right. But did you know that they are also very strong? Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck, written by Allison Paul Clackwoods, follows the story of a little boy and his cool mom who drives a big red monster truck. The truck is, truck is big. It bounces and smashes and takes them on amazing adventures all over the country. Together, they go on adventures, making lifelong memories as they explore every state of the United States, from Alabama to Wyoming and the nation's capital, in this bubbly, bright book. Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck is Allison Paul Clackwitz's first book. It provides a fun and interactive way of teaching children about the 50 United States. It will inspire and entertain them with its beautifully designed illustrations. And it's just a delight. We are so very, very proud and very, very happy to add Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Clackwitz to our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. If you are the author of a great children's book and want to have your book considered for our Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com, and click on the Author Services button. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so special, starting with Joy Stoyerwald. Please be sure to check out her book, The Peculiar Pig. We also want to thank our sponsors, Nita Clark and Kathy Doherty. Be sure to check out There Are No Flies in Montana. Also want to thank the author of the Queen Bernita Visitor Series, Dr. Don Menge. And, of course, we want to encourage you to check out the Storied app. The Storied app. You can download the app for free uh, wherever you download your app site. Go to the 
uh, the Play Store on Google. If you have uh, an Apple phone, you go to the Apple Store. And you can find out more about the Storied app by going to trystoried.com. I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan, for all of the work she does on the podcast. Be sure to check out her blogs for every episode at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me, and I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.